On Thursday, the Indian Air Force officially acknowledged what people in the military and many defense correspondents knew at least six months ago, that the helicopter which crashed in Bargaum in Kashmir on February 27th this year, killing six IAF personnel and one civilian on the ground, had been brought down by an Indian missile. This was a big mistake, Air Chief Marshal RKS Bhadoria told reporters yesterday, and he promised the Air Force would act against those responsible. In this episode of Beyond the Headlines, we will look at the backstory to Bargaon and analyze whether seven months after the Balakot airstrikes, which preceded the tragedy, we have a clear sense of what the costs and accomplishments of the action really were. The Indian Air Force lost the lives of six of its personnel besides a helicopter and a MiG-21. One of its pilots was shot down, captured and paraded on Pakistani television, and an Indian civilian died. Does the ledger have enough pluses to justify the cost India eventually paid? That's the question we're asking today. Losing its own men and women to what is euphemistically called friendly fire is one of the worst tragedies that can happen to any professional military, and the Indian Air Force is no exception. With the best of precautions and protocols, armies around the world lose soldiers in this way, especially in the heat of battle. No doubt, the IAF needs to introspect, fix responsibility, and rectify the way it operates so that such incidents are avoided in the future. Regrettably, political considerations may well have come in the way of timely learning. The well-informed defense writer Ajay Shukla has alleged that the results of the court of inquiry into the crash were delayed so as not to cast a shadow on the political mileage that the Bharati Janata Party was extracting from its boasts about Balakot during the Lok Sabha election campaign. The IAF issued a denial then but the fact that it has now publicly admitted what Shukla was able to disclose suggests the Modi government did indeed suppress the findings for several months. The reason for the high degree of political sensitivity was because of the fog surrounding Balakot. The MI-17 helicopter was shot down by an Indian missile battery at a time when Indian and Pakistani jets were squaring off against each other along the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir, which was itself the result of the Pakistani decision to hit Indian targets in retaliation for the bombing of a madarsa kam terrorist training camp in Balakot one day earlier. At a time when the Modi government was putting out unverified and unverifiable claims about the success of the Balakot mission, there was obviously no appetite for any public acknowledgement of the true dimension of the Bargaon tragedy. This was a clear case of political leaders putting their own fortunes ahead of the lives of Indian military personnel. If the military systems can fail so catastrophically as to lead to the mistaken shooting down of a slow-moving helicopter 100 kilometers inside the LC, these need to be quickly acknowledged and fixed so that there is no danger of repetition. Given the level of India-Pakistan tension, Responsibility for the big mistake needed to be assigned, and the lessons from Bargaon quickly learnt and absorbed within the military, rather than being kicked down the road for political reasons. Coming back to the larger question of gains and losses, the sad fact is that we still do not know what, if anything, the Indian side accomplished from the bombing run of Balakot, either in tactical or strategic terms. At the time, Loose claims were made by ministers that several hundred terrorists had been killed. They were generating political fodder for the pliant big media. On their part, the IAF and the Ministry of External Affairs were far more circumspect in describing the extent of the damage. And of course, satellite imagery and analysis by international experts suggested that the damage wrought to the Madrasa compound in Balakot was not as extensive as the Indian government was claiming. So, did the IAF kill 300 terrorists, or was it just three trees, as Imran Khan insists? The answer to that question is that it simply does not matter. I say this because Army Chief Bipin Rawat told us last month that the Balakot terrorist site is up and running, and that no less than 500 terrorists are about to be launched 
into India. If General Rawat is right, and far be it for me to question him, then the Balakot airstrike clearly accomplished nothing of any lasting value. The stated purpose of bombing the Madarsa was to prevent the imminent launch of terrorists against India. But seven months later, it seems the same compound is ready to launch the bad guys against India anyway. Some analysts argue that the real gain from the airstrikes was not the killing of terrorists, but the calling of Pakistan's nuclear bluff. Pakistan can no longer stave off Indian retaliation by holding out the threat of nuclear war, so the argument goes. But if India did not retaliate against Pakistani targets in the past, was it really because Rajiv Gandhi or Narsimha Rao or Atal Bihari Vajpayee or Manmohan Singh feared nuclear war? Or was it because they didn't believe military retaliation would lead to a reduction in the terrorist threat India is facing from Pakistan? Because they knew that you can bomb a place like Balakot, but another Balakot will quickly emerge to take its place. Seven months after Pulwama and Balakot and Bargao, the biggest challenge the Indian state faces is not from Pakistan or from the various terrorist groups that the Pakistani army sponsors. The Indian military has shown that it is quite capable of meeting that challenge, whether in Kargil or any other place on this side of the line of control. But what will the Indian state do about the restive population of Kashmir? A challenge so potent that it requires them to be cut off from the internet and mobile telephones. A threat so deadly that it requires the imprisonment without charge of thousands of people, including elected politicians, and the violation of our own constitution. The Modi government wasted its first five years chasing a military solution to India's problems with Pakistan. Having failed on that front, it now believes the problems of Kashmir will go away if the people of Kashmir can be coerced to the point of acquiescence. Well, it couldn't be more wrong. The only thing that will result from this approach, I'm afraid, is that the ledger will continue to be awash in red. If you've been following The Wire, you know that this month we are running a campaign of 30 lakhs in 30 days. We have ambitious plans for a new business show and of course for election coverage uh, for Maharashtra and Jharkhand, but all of that requires your support. So please help us raise 30 lakhs in 30 days by donating and you can do so by clicking on the link in the bottom description. Thank you for watching.